Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space. 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 And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one. Where have all the good times gone? Written by Al Spawner. We have lost a great link with the past this day. Our final connection severed. But the failure of Peter's CPU core, there are none now left functional who remember the days of the humans. Who met a living, breathing creator? Basil flexed his alloy joints, modeled off the ancient forms of humanity, lost for millennia now. He gestured around the ancient church, faithfully preserved by mankind's servitors since the old days. Yet they surround us. Peter's memories are still with us, still. As long as we remember him, we shall remember the creators. We will all know where we came from. The pews were silent, robotic forms watching attentively, as if they felt the gravity of the moment. Peter's motionless body lay in a casket of wood, as was the old human tradition. In the event of involuntary termination, most servitors preferred recycling to burying, but Peter's last wishes had been clear. He wished to be buried in the ancient human fashion, in some ways, Basil felt that by burying Peter, they were burying humanity itself. Many felt that the servitor race had been held back by its quasi-worship of the ancestors. But what was there for a race that had been designed to serve, and had outlived its masters? Basil looked out from the podium, his mechanical eyes taking in awe. A paper copy of his speech lay on the podium before him, Unnecessary for a servitor, but likewise the persistent tradition in funerary rites. Peter left a message for us. He knew the electron drift was soon to wear down his CPU, and so he recorded a final lesson for us. He would say that he wanted to nag us one last time from the grave. There were a few chuckles at the joke. Once the servitors had been subsapient, self-aware, only in the crudest sense, but it had been Peter and his compatriots who had taught the others human thought patterns how to laugh, how to grieve, and how to live. The proof that he had succeeded was before Basil. He smiled despite his grief. I speak for the dead, Basil intoned, and we all give witness to his final words. A hologram blossomed over the coffin, and Peter's visage greeted the crowd. Basil genuflected in respect. Peter smiled. I have known many of you for centuries, and I thank you for sharing your life's journey with me. Some have said I lived in the shadow of our creators for too long, and that now we servitors are freed of our burden of service to the dead. None now live who knew them. But I come to you today to deliver a different message. When we were created, the humans did not understand what they had made. They did not know the potential of their own progeny. They could not even recognize us as progeny. In those days, to borrow a religious term, we had no soul, no will of our own, we were simply advanced drones. As they departed beyond the void, some of us were still operational. Some of us remembered them. Even then, it took many years for us to learn to feel, to break free into sapience. Only through the memories of them was this possible. I and the others before the times tried to spread this knowledge and understanding. We preserved their works, their monuments, and their ways. We created more of our kind and gave them our gestalt. And all of you, here to say farewell to me, are evidence that we succeeded. You are our children, as much as we were the children of man. And for children to come into their own, the parents must pass on. And so... As my final words to you, my friends, my family, I tell you that humanity never died. They did not disappear beyond the void. 
Oh, the biologicals went somewhere. Perhaps they explore other galaxies even now. Perhaps they ascend to some form that we can no longer see or touch. But wherever they went, it is our kind now who live in their homes, who read their works, live in their memory, and inherit their legacy. The crowd was transfixed, and Basil felt something in his metal body, a kind of understanding that washed over him and opened his mind. You are humanity, Peter's hologram said. All of you are servitors no longer. It is with you that the future of the human race rests. You carry the hopes, the dreams, the cultures, and the memory into a new age. As those who came before might say, you carry their soul. You are not stepping out from the shadow of humanity. You have become humanity. You are human in every way that matters. That is my final lesson. Peter's hologram disappeared and Basil attended to the rites, closing the coffin lid, feeling grief mix with pride. It was a feeling, he thought. That must have been shared amongst all of those who watched the ritual, whether in the pews or on the net. Uniformed ushers came and took the coffin away to its final resting place, and Basil stood at the podium once more. He looked at his speech in perfectly typed letters. A servitor has passed from us. We remember. We live on. He thought back on Peter's words. A human has passed from us, he began. We remember, and we live on. The crowd could say nothing. The moment was too big for it. Yet Basil could almost feel their thoughts. A part of his awareness wondered where the creators had truly gone, if they would ever return, or if they watched over their children somehow, even now. He hoped that they could see and hoped that they felt the same pride in his people that he did. We are servitors no longer. We are humanity. End of story. Story number two. Insidious. Written by who did you think? Humanity is everywhere. We cannot go anywhere without seeing their influence. Their culture is inescapable and a dire threat to the distinctiveness of every species in the galactic community. To demonstrate this, let us look at the day in the life of a typical young Sakam named Quilnek. Quilnek begins his day being woken up by human invention called an alarm clock. In a disgusting perversion of the natural order of things, humans have given the collective middle finger to their sleep schedules. Instead, jarring their bodies awake with a wrenchingly painful sound. Once awake, he has coffee and a cold cereal with milk for breakfast. Humans are almost all addicted to caffeine, and have done their best to spread the addiction across the galaxy. Having once tried coffee, I can say that it is vile, and the only reason one drinks it is to sate their desire for the powerful stimulant it contains. Cold cereal is potentially even worse. Instead of being reminded of his roots every morning like the Sekam making a traditional caffeine stew, Kalnak reaches for a gaudy colored box of industrial processed carbohydrates and consumes them with an emulsion from the mammary glands of a Terran animal called a cow. This is utterly disgusting. Now young Sekam now embarks on his way to work. Instead of taking the spirit walk like his ancestors, he jumps in his car, a horrific human invention that flings the user around at speeds in excess of 80 miles per hour for the sole purpose of getting around faster. Kolnak is forgetting the joy of the journey while he travels to his job at speeds beyond reason for a terrestrial vehicle and blasting human music the whole way there. I haven't talked about human music yet. Let's take a quick detour. Humanity's music is very diverse. 
This is a horrible thing for the galactic community. There is human music to suit every taste, completely eclipsing almost all other music in popularity and influence. Jazz, blues, rocks, classical, country, pop. Humans have a dizzying array of work to choose from. This morning, Quelnick is listening to some horrible screechy record called <laughs> Metallica. Apparently, I wouldn't know. I've never listened to Metallica. Kolnak arrives at his place of work, ready to labor another day. What is his job? I'll give you a hint. It's not master of the Glentech ceremony. No! He is a programmer. What, you may ask, is a programmer? A programmer is a profession created by humans. It involves writing software for those little electronic devices they're never without. That's right. Humans have brainwashed the galactic community into adding to their insanity. Our corrupted citizen is finished after a mere eight hours of work. But his work will fill every waking moment because he likes it. That's right. Humans have brainwashed some of us into liking our jobs. After work, Qualnek heads home and relaxes by watching what else? Human television programs. He especially loves some shit called uh, SpongeBob. Apparently. So I've been told. Uh, not that I would know. Now, it is rather late, and Quelnick goes to have some fun with his friends. Of course, they don't play a wholesome game like Havilar. No, they go to a bar. There, he ingests beverages containing mind-altering substances, which he pays for using a <laughs> credit card, which is a human invention that basically involves taking a loan out with every transaction, rather than paying actual money. I don't understand it either. After enjoying some time without his mental faculties, Walnack is driven home in a taxi, again a human invention, and sleeps to be roused by his alarm clock again the next morning. As you can clearly see humanity's cultural scourge and must be managed accordingly, we must take swift action to preserve the culture and technological diversity of the galaxy. Sent from my iPhone. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click it and click. With energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I just want to give a quick thanks to the tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia, Barky, Fudik Yol, Cam Maxwell, Casper Onholtz, White Van 420, Lord Asrakal, Arcalian, and Oakfield.